So, hello and welcome to another English video of mine. Today I'm going to show you the Technics RS5 stereo cassette deck. Now, first of all, I'll excuse myself for some background noise you might hear. Um, as it also has turned out in a recent stream I did, you can hear most things going on in the bathroom, in this room. So, um, yeah, I'll excuse myself for that. <laughs> um, anyway. I'm going to show this Technic Technics RS5 cassette deck. I can't speak today, so... <laughs> oh well. Um, I bought this cassette deck back on my holiday or vacation or however you like to call it. Um, this year back in the Netherlands. Well, not back in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands. Um, because, well, the Netherlands are cool. But I got it there because in the Netherlands they have a lot more Swift stores than they do over here in Germany. We actually have quite a few thrift stores, but most of them just sell clothing and maybe furniture, and if you are lucky, lamps. Or if, yeah, if you are lucky, they sell lamps. But um, mostly they don't sell electronics like this, which for me really is the main point of going to a thrift store or to the flea market. Um, so, yeah, that kind of sucks. But um, in the Netherlands, they have quite a few thrift stores selling electronics. They have a Swift store chain that's called Head Good or however you pronounce that. Sorry for my Dutch viewers, I don't know how to call that. <laughs> um but that's a chain actually, a chain of stores and um they are pretty good in my opinion. Now when I was there there also were actually quite a few Swift stores um that were owned by independent people. So that was really cool. But um, in most of those, I didn't find anything, but they had cool stuff, but it seemed like those Swift stores kind of wanted a bit too much for their things. But then again, I did pay 20 euro for this, which is also a little bit expensive, but it's it's a pretty good deal, actually. I can't complain, now that I have this thing, I tested it out, but just when you were in the Swift store, seeing it at first, you're like, 20 euro for this little thingy? It's a little expensive, but it actually turns out it's not expensive at all for for what I got. This tape deck is just awesome. Anyway, anyway, not anyway. One thing that was cool um, when I was in the Swift store, um, I tested this thing in an outlet. They said, oh, they had, they have outlets there where you can test the stuff. And then a employee came around and asked me something in Dutch, and I didn't know. But then he actually asked me in German, and his German was pretty good, actually. He had a Dutch accent, of course, but it was pretty good. If I needed a tape to test it with, and I was like, yeah, sir, if you have one. And then he bought a tape, and I put it in, and it actually, amazingly, worked. So that was cool, but one of the things that then afterwards um, kind of worried me a little bit, which is very interesting, at first, I actually found the eject button was fine, but uh, when I then wanted to get the tape out, this one is a separate eject and stop button. No, tell more about it later. But I was pressing down the stop button, and I was like, "Oh no, the tape got stuck inside." But uh, it got uh, it got out. I just have to figure out how this works. So I had to. I'm gonna explain more about that later on. So this tape deck originally is from 1982, if I'm not mistaken, and it came in a um, mini system Technics made, which was really advanced for the time. We had this tape deck with digital VU meters, soft touch controls, metal tape support. Then they had a tuner with digital presets, digital tuning, and then what was really quite advanced, and I kind of want one of those turntables, um, was they had a turntable, there was a linear tracking turntable, so instead of the tone number going out like this, it is in the back and then just moves along like that and uh, it kind of worked like a CD player. You put a record on it and will scan the record and will scan how many tracks the record had and then you could um, tie or press the number of the track you want to listen and I think you could even program it like a CD player and other pretty advanced stuff like that. Uh, I kind of want one of those turntables because it's just so cool and it would also save me a lot of space. Um, but for now I have one that works just fine, so yeah. But that was a really advanced system for the time, really expensive too. So I'm kind of wondering what happened to the rest of this system. Because I don't think that they sold the components separately. But uh, I, I guess they did. 
or maybe the owner of this was like, this is a good system, I'd like to keep it, but I don't really need the tape deck, so I'm gonna drop it, out, drop it off at the thrift store. Um, but anyway, so that's really quite cool. Now we will get to the overview, so right there is the uh, power button. It is a real power button, not like a standby button where it just cuts off the low voltage and the transformer always runs. That actually cuts the power off completely. Then down here we have the buttons, and we have exact record, rewind, review, fast forward, cue, play, stop, and pause. So, the exact button, which is kind of cool, let's say you are in play and you just want to get your tape out. We can press exact and it automatically stops the play and opens the door, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Now, that is proper cool. Um, so, yeah, I think at least that is proper cool. Then, um, it also has rewind order play. So if you press play and rewind at the same time, it rewinds and then when the order stop engages that um, stops the playback, or stops the rewinding, it automatically goes into playback, which is pretty cool. And then, you know, record play, this is all the same. And you have cue and review, so when you are in play mode, um, and you press the wind button, it leaves the playhead engaged and this mutes the audio a little bit and then you can actually hear a track start and end then over there we have a analog tape counter and the Dolby noise reduction switch and this does have automatic tape select it does not support type 3 tapes but I think you can actually record on type 3 tapes in the uh, normal position but we really nowadays Finding type 3 tape is pretty rare, so it's not going to be an important thing to have a tape deck that features type 3. However, in 1982, when type 3 tapes still were available and uh, being produced, that seems a little odd to me that they already didn't include that tape type. Because I think um, I saw a Sony stereo system. Again, similar idea to this, with separate components, but on the Sony one, everything is connected with ribbon cable, so you cannot use it this as a standalone component like you can do with this Technic stuff. And that one uh, supported Type 3 too. Anyway, um, here's the microphone. Oh my goodness, what is it with me and throwing tripods over today? Um, left and right microphone inputs, auto input select, so as soon as you put your mic in there, um, it automatically switches over to that. A lot of Technic's tape decks of the time still um, had a switch to switch in between um, the inputs, but my 1983 JVC cassette deck already does it automatically, so... I don't think it's a really big deal, but Technics kind of was stuck a bit back in the 70s with that. You have your input selector, and this absolutely beautiful VFD. This is absolutely beautiful. And a record light over there. Um, I can't really show you the back, because it's like in this setup right here right now. But, yeah, so, let me see, can I get the loose? Maybe I can show you the back, let me see, it's probably not going to be the best view of the back though. So you can kind of see the back there, yeah, you can see the RCA cables. It can um, hook up with RCA cables and uh, like that, but I don't know if you can see it up here. You see that little plastic thingy in the top of the cover? I don't know if you can see it. That is a direct connect, so you flip that up, and then that subs right into the amplifier of the stack. And that way you didn't have to use RCA cables. And, uh, yeah. So now let's get to the demonstration part. I'm first of all going to start up with the standard Ferric cassette. This one was recorded in my 1983 ZVC double cassette deck. Um, some people probably know everything about that tape deck. I just don't. It's a ZVC KD W110. Um, with Dolby, so let's play it. So you can hear the playback quality is really good. And here's your cue and review. Kind of want to get to the previous song. So you heard the gap. Between the songs, that's how you locate your songs. And you can also do it forward.
So this tape deck really sounds quite good, especially in the bass. So yeah, that's pretty, pretty good actually. Um, I want to show you the heads in it real quick, because I forgot to do that. So, let's have a look. Here are the heads. So there's the record play head, there's the erase head, and then right there is the capstan and pin roller. Now you can see how the soft touch mechanism in here works. This does have soft touch. So if I turn it off and then press play, you can see nothing happens. It don't move up like in a normal manual tape deck. But if I now apply power, you see they go up real quick because the switch was engaged for the heads to go up but at the same time I already pressed stop so it went back down again and you see now if I press play it goes up and down up and down and then winding and winds and you can see interestingly pins water drops down doing wind um, and if I press play here and then pause you can see it goes down and up and doing winding you can see it also or doing queuing it also puts the heads down just a little bit, so um, um, the pin roller isn't engaged with the cap stand anymore, so the uh, supply and takeout wheels can freely turn the tape. And yeah, now I'm going to put in a metal tape that was recorded on this cassette deck. Now this cassette deck did need a speed adjustment and a head azimuth adjustment. So this sounds a little slow if anyone knows this song, which if you have watched the video about cassette tapes, you might know this song. Um, so if it sounds a little fast, that's because this is recorded before I adjusted the speed. Adjusting the speed on this was a pain, because the something was not quite aligned in the motor. So first of all, Technics has a little hole in the back. We have to stub a long thin screwdriver through um, to adjust the speed, because the inside is just so packed, you just cannot do it the normal way and uh, that was already pain finding a screwdriver for that and then the motor, something in the motor was bent or something so the screwdriver won't really work that well so I had to take out the outlet on the back of this, this does have a power outlet which was of course meant to hook up other components of the matching system and I had to go through the power outlet hole hold it at an angle and I could kinda turn it but at the same time I also had to be careful not to sort out the screwdriver to the uh, casing of the motor because otherwise I would have blown out the motor's speed control and to not, not touch the wires of the loose outlet to make a short circuit with the 230 volts or even worse put 230 volts onto the motor so that definitely wasn't easy but I did it anyway metal tape recorded in this deck Again, Dolby. I, I love Dolby noise reduction, so of course I used it. So you can see Q and review. And this is this this just sounds amazing. Like this sounds absolutely great. Like, listen to that. Like, this tape deck this sounds absolutely amazing. Um now let's do a recording test on the uh, tape type 2 on chrome on this real old tape so it might not sound the absolutely greatest because this is an old tape and I recorded it over like 3000 times but um, let's give it a test so I'm gonna use a song from the YouTube on library Ouch. it's called Long Way Home by Silent Partner Partner? Partner, yes so uh, let me get past the leader here record and let's just play it. Now 
Now I'm wondering, is this Santa supposed to be? Is it No, it's not. Uh, might have some issues here with my cables. Did I break it? Yeah, I had some issues with my wiring. Sorry for that. Oh, what the heck? What's going on? There you go. So... There you go. Recording. Stop it and rewind it, and let's play it back. Um, again, this tape is kind of worn out, so it doesn't sound as good as the metal tape, but it sounds pretty good. It's a bit quieter, I would say. Otherwise, it sounds pretty much close, though. But I'm gonna re uh, demonstrate the rewind autoplay here, so press these two buttons down. You can see. I want to stop and get this and it starts playing. Again, it's a little bit quieter, but otherwise it sounds this good. There you This tape deck just really sounds great, and this is why I say 20 euros was a good price. Because this is just an amazing tape deck. And I would actually really like to have it in my setup over there. But it just doesn't really fit in size wise. And I have a little bit of a special connection to that ZVC one. So that's why the ZVC one stays over there. But then, if I want to record, I'm using this one now. And not knowing the JVC. Despite the fact that JVC does sound pretty good, this one just sounds so much better. Now you know the JVC you record on there, like, yeah, it sounds good. And this one you record on, you're like, holy moly, that sounds as good as what came out of my tablet. So that's why I'm using this one. And uh, yeah, so that's the end of the video. That's a video about an actually still relatively simple tape deck that just performance-wise is absolutely awesome. I also looked at the specs and the mount flutter is really low on this. It's just it's just an awesome deck, specs-wise and performance-wise and everything. If you're looking into just getting a tape deck um, in, in 2020 and you just want to mess around a little bit with tapes, get this one. Get the Technics RS5. It's awesome. These Sony still come with good belts and they're awesome. However, it looks like belt replacement once a belt fails is a bit complicated in these, but generally the belts in these are still good. So, if you just want a simple tape deck that works, look out for the Technics RS5. It's also really small, has an outlet on the back, which I always find to be very handy. Yeah, it's just, an, it's just a lovely deck. So yeah, I'll thank you for watching, and uh, I hope we see us in a future video very soon.